Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this narration of the web series The Nature of Predators. If you're new to the series, there is a playlist listed down below in the description. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Chapter 176 Memory Transcription Subject Onso Yotel Technical Specialist Date Standardized Human Time March 26, 2137 I was glad to have a moment to relax and contemplate the city, rather than listen to Colchian spiels. There were engineering advantages to building underground. Natural disasters above ground wouldn't touch the shadow cast, and the insulation of the encompassing topsoil entailed a constant temperature. It wouldn't need excess budget expenditures on air conditioning and heating. Did it pose the question of how close to the surface office groundwater was, and how they'd handled any leakage? This seemed to a modernized version of a sprawling underground cities of Lian, such as the Thalsin's Kalamayas borough, a massive complex that could house tens of thousands of occupants. Its main intention was as sanctuary from invaders during the Crane Wars. Human fingers snapped right next to my left eye. Onzo, are you daydreaming about some engineering shit? What can I say? I can't handle boredom. Glad you're back safely. That didn't take long, I remarked, flicking an ear at Tyler. We got the shadow casts to surrender and found out this is all has to do with the prion plague. One more step for getting out of here. All Sol's bulbous eyes looked glazed over. The government never believed that humanity was dangerous at all. I saw the prey-like behavior on their data dump, but it was so misaligned with my instincts. The reason I feel like I'm going to puke just looking at them is selective breeding based on a false threat. It's all just lies. I know how that feels, Sovereign sighed. My society, my family, the federation I wasted my life on, my identity as a gojin, and my knowledge as a captain. It's all gone down the drain. If an old man like me can find a way forward, then you can too. Samantha rolled her eyes. Stop right there. Your way forward is tricking people into calling Onzo slurs. It's okay, Sam. That was what I expected from a spike back, I said cheekily, using the human invented word. Now why the feck are we drifting after some old Colchian? I'm just following you guys. Marodus is supposed to be leading us to Slanek, assuming he's part of their prisoner collection. I hope that the Vendel is all right. I feel responsible for setting his fate in motion, Sovereign sighed. Tyler pursed his lips. I don't know if he's there, but I sure don't think you'll be a welcome sight if he remembers anything. I ain't got to tell you how he feels about you. My whiskers twitched with nostalgia. Last time we spoke, Slinek told me that he was unwell. I warned him not to use those two words. Why don't we save the speculation on his mental state for if we find him, Sam asked. Keep moving, stay alert. I trust the word of this fecking boy who cried wolf over a Moranus. Me too, Tyler agreed. But given how old the squid is, I doubt the lockup is a long walk from his ivory tower. We'll see who our supposed prisoner friends are. Now passing, along with a sizable contingent of UN soldiers and angry Colchuge citizens, marched after Moranus for the first-hand glimpse at how the shadow cast caged insurrectionists. I processed the tidbits of new information as we walk leaving a mental note to read up on the transmission methods of this prion plague. While I hadn't heard the Commonwealth rationale from their lips, I could assume that they linked eating meat with the acquisition of this disease in some way. Somehow, they decided predator elimination was for their benefit for all life, except the predators, of course, then used that to justify forcing the ideology on hundreds of worlds. Why, that excused a silent partnership with the Arxor, or crushing unruly herbivores like us Yotl, was another matter. There is no consistency, even in their internal logic. Whatever piss-poor justification they make for our all-encompassing control, I am happy with my decision not to listen to their disingenuous desperation. I knew it would be some shitty excuse. Chief Marona shuffled towards a sprawling complex, a single-story structure which lacked exterior clues to what hid inside its confines. The decrepit concrete walls looked bleak enough to be a prison, and the sensory input didn't brighten at all when we stepped inside. Rows of hallways passed forward were arranged under Colchian numerals, with the centermost one having two slanted lines which represented one. I wasn't sure why the count started at the center, and judging by how mystified Tyler behaved behind his visual translator, he wasn't either. The Colchian leader started towards the dim corridor at the complex's heart, leading into its recesses, the humans were quick to stop him for a question and answer section. Why the central chamber? Tyler barked, suspicion emanating from his voice. What are the other ones? Moronis made a sweeping gesture with his tentacles. 
This isn't the only Shadowcast prison. The one under the capital is reserved for disloyal citizens above ground and foreign actors who are working against our interests. They're arranged by the severity of their actions. The closer you get to Rogue One, the more grave your misdeed. That, and it is usually reserved for individuals who are well known in the public eye and could have propaganda issues. There are plenty of citizens in other halls, but I know who you are here for. You won't want row one and the lab. I stiffened with alarm. The lab? A lab for what? I don't like the sound of that either. Are you all cooking up some cure shit back there? Tyler parroted my concerns. Chief Marona blinked in irritation. The Shadows Capital Research Lab is for several purposes. Yes, it's a backup. In the instance that we need to take up our own research. A prudent choice, given what happened on Tulsk. We might have uh, dabbled in some human experiments after encouraging results in Malu. With the new information at hand, it might have been possible to integrate you, rather than relegate you to the Oxel's role. However, its primary service to our cause is as a uh, neurological studies facility. The fur of my heckles raised as I picked up on the implication. They bred at a disease facility. Is that where you've been keeping Slinek? I'd say it's more focused on the success of our re-education measures, as well as analyzing the brain scan data to better understand and target aggressive areas. Some people need to be uh, reminded of the proper beliefs. The vandal who shot Nikonis in cold blood after exposure to humans is a prime example. What the fuck have you done? He's here. The elderly Colchian purred, sick amusement in his eyes. But he won't be thrilled to see your predator friends. My hind legs bunched up to lunge at the elderly Colchian, but Tyler hurriedly pushed me back. I could sense anger projected from his gaze beneath the biohazard mask and wondered why he had stopped me from putting this old chieftain in place. How dare he use such flippant tone to talk about rewriting someone's brain, no doubt through cruel, invasive methods. The blonde human revealed his rationale for stopping me as his gloved hand curled up into a fist. Before hundreds of witnesses, he smashed his knuckles into the Colchian's eye, smashing through the socket. I could see Sovereign wince, knowing from his first meeting with Officer Katona how strong the gargantuan primate could be. Does Tyler think that I can't fight for myself? I'm more than capable of taking on an arrogant elderly despot, especially one who's so casual about horrific deeds. Let me take a swing at him, I protested, as Marona's nursed an eye that was turning purple. For everything he's done. Tyler shook his head, flexing his finger. Nah, we're done now. I ain't gonna let you swing at him, cause if anyone gets in trouble out of this, should be me. That was for Marcel and for all Slinek. Won't you ever mock him again? To be clear, we will come back for everyone wrongfully detained. Take us down to row one and try to learn some empathy on the way. Orsal turned to Sovlin. I thought you said that humans weren't going to attack without warning. The Goji chewed his claws with discomfort. Um, the chief deserved it. I don't disagree. He threw away countless Kolshian lives and pissed at him too. I just want an honest answer about how high their threshold for violence is. So that I don't say anything that provokes an assault. Unless you torture their friends, you're fine. Tyler saves these beatdowns for special cases. Samantha rolled her eyes. But if I threw a right hook at a prisoner, I'd be unhinged. Well, I knew Slinek and Marcel, and I have a better right hook, Tyler said. Psst, tell yourself whatever you need to sleep at night, but you don't have a boxing career in your future. Now make that Colchian sod get at his ass in gear. I give the orders. But get the fuck moving, Moronus, or I will let Sam swing at your other eye. Chief Moronus marched down the central corridor as the Terrans kept their wary eyes trained for any traps. The Commonwealth leader was still reading from Tyler's punch. Nikonus' replacement leaned over a retinal scanner, mumbling a remark about the primates being lucky that hadn't tenderized both of his eyes. There were clicks as the blast door mechanism came loose, and it slowly creaked open to reveal the full hallway. Dingy prison cells lined both sides, with despairing inmates backing away from the bars and the sound of footsteps. Some of the prisoners were, in fact, Colchians, but there were a number of different species scattered in hundreds of cells. 
Any residents of Ava with serious aspirations of unsettling the Commonwealth government would land themselves in here. The stench was unmistakable, showing that they'd had negligible access to hygiene facilities. A handful seemed happy to see the human posse marching in and begged us to let them out. Some UN soldiers kept back to help liberate and document the captives, perhaps taking meticulous records for the Sapien Coalition or the Dirgin Shield to witness. The Kolshim protesters tagging along seemed horrified after hearing that some of their own neighbors would be thrown here without due process. Orcel looked like she wished that she could swing at Moronis herself. There's more prisoners here than I expected, but no sign of Slinek or a lab. If these are the average inmates' accommodations in this facility, I don't want to imagine what life has been like. The bars of a cage next to us rattled, drawing our attention. I saw a tear-stricken caution pressing his face against the barrier. Something about his violet visage tickled my memory. Sovlin paused for a brief second before his eyes widened. Tyler craned his neck at us, confused why two herbivores in his squad were stopping. The gojit moved closer to the cell, and the prisoner's eyes, tinged with a bit of instinctive disgust to humans, widened in desperation. Help me, the Kolshin pleaded in a hoarse voice. Sovlin tilted his head. You're the Kolshin commander from the Battle of Ko. I'm sure of it. Captain Monahan talked you into having the fleet stand down. What the fuck are you doing here? Did you realize what you were doing was wrong? I... I didn't want to kill civilians. Herbivores. Uh, the humans, I remember what she said. That you would reach Arthur. You have now. And if we're still standing, I did the right thing. I saved my men from the battle that we couldn't win. If you wouldn't sacrifice the Massex, how could I? Tyler wheeled the Moranus. Why is he here? I don't know why every prisoner is here, the chief grumbled. This one, I do. Commander tells us he humiliated the Commonwealth and disobeyed direct orders. He allowed your allies to survive, abandoning the battle. We could not tolerate such treasonous defiance, questioning of our orders. The greatest treason of all, asking questions. My ears bent back with fury, though it was cathartic to see Moronis' swollen eye staring back at me. I still wanted to beat the shit out of this pompous asshole. You tried so hard to snuff out curiosity and wonder for the universe. Orsal scowled, in prison for not rendering the Mazics extinct. You shadow casts are monsters. Spare me the indictment. Do you want me to take you to Slinek? Or do you want to lament every prisoner's life story? If it's the former, I suggest we keep moving. Chief Moronis didn't wait for an answer, stomping off down the hallway, as pleas for help rose from the furthest cells. A duo of Ewan soldiers stopped off to guard Talvis's cage. We weren't going to get involved with freeing an enemy commander, especially considering that he'd threatened to obliterate a civilian populace. Under orders or not, it is a war crime by Terran law. As we drew nearer to the far wall, which seemed to be a containment bulkhead on closer inspection, Another prisoner clamored out for our attention. This time, I recognized the alien face outright. It was the testy, dirty ambassador to Earth, Koji, the one who jumped at the chance to abet Nikonis' assassin. She'd been missing ever since, but unlike Slinek, the Kolshians hadn't publicized her capture. The dirty and were never overly fond of humans, and that started from the top. Koji may not have the knowledge that the UN saved Kalkwa, given that she was captured well before that started. Humans, the grey avian squawked, wrapping stress-plucked wings around her bars. I'm sorry for everything, for rebuffing your friendship. Please, please let me out. It's horrible here. I hear screams from the lab all the time. I think it's going to be me next. They kept my mind intact so that I could watch what they did to Kalkwa, clip by clip. Are there any survivors? Let me out. Samantha crossed her arms. We bailed Kalkwa out though I'm sure the Kolshians admitted that part. There were still billions that died, but without the UN, it would have been the whole fecking planet. The shield fought beside us here, at the Battle of Arthur. Seems your side finally wants to be on better terms, Sovereign grumbled. Your leadership definitely want to bomb this world, but the humans got them to hold off long enough for us to scope out the Shadowcast. The entire homogeneity fleet came, I added, 
I caught the reasoning as, if our side lost, then Kalkwa would be overrun by the Commonwealth anyway. We have the chance to tear down the Federation, and for you to return as your homeworld is rebuilt. There are alterations of our society and stifling rule. Over. Finished. Thank humanity for making it happen. Koji's beak parched with hope. If what you say is true, it seems we owe humanity a huge debt. It did seem odd. The cautions only showed me clips from a small time frame. And not the aftermath. I'm relieved to know some of us survived. And I want to help with revenge on Alpha. Let me out! Well, we would like the Dirtian to be more open to our friendship. Tyler hesitated before punching the button to unlock Koji's door. The avian stumbled forward on unsteady feet before wrapping her wings around his waist, sobbing. Easy now. Say, I wonder why you helped kill Nikonas too. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The archives, the Colchians and the Farsal stripped us of individual thought. Our opinions were too strong, our intellect too sharp for them. How do you ever get that back? Who are we? The consensus on Kakwa and my individual feeling was that they needed to pay. We made a decision based on emotion, and it felt good. Was it worth it? I questioned. Billions of dirty and died because of that one irrational choice. If I'd known what would have happened to my beautiful home, I would have never put this plan in motion. We didn't think. We just wanted the figurehead who took our minds dead. I knew our role would be glaring, but I didn't imagine it had condemned Kalkwa. When I tried to fly away from Nikonis' corpse, a drone had no trouble tracking me down and caging me. I've all but forgotten what life looks like. Oh, how it feels to have air under my wings. I saw thoughts and dreams of home. My friend carefully removed Koji's arms from his torso, wishing to keep moving. We got a real special friend of mine to rescue. I don't know what you meant by screams in the lab, but I ain't waiting to leave Slenek in there a second longer. We're happy you're safe, and you are going home, Ambassador. Head over to the medics back there, and they'll find you a transport. Thank you again. I'm sorry that I didn't see your kindness sooner, but I hope that we can meet again so I can make it up for my past hostility. If you want to make up for it, keep your people's bombers at bay. We want to do a thorough investigation of the Shadow Cast, which could take weeks. Plus, there's a lot of victims to rescue. We need the shield to stay patient and give us time to do our jobs, for everyone's sake. Whatever pull I have with my government, I'll see that you have as much time as you need. Good luck, humans. The Dirtian ambassador trudged off in the direction of Terran medics, all but collapsing in their arms. Comprehending the stories of every prisoner in these walls would take months. After encountering a number of familiar faces along the way, it drilled home how punitive the Colchians were to anyone who thwarted their wishes. From Kawa to Kalkwa, there had been no tolerance for rebellion. Any people who gave humanity the slightest aid were whisked away. If the Shadowcast could get their tentacles on those poor souls. I doubted that they'd been more merciful during their battles and incidents. Moronas had gotten to work opening the bulkhead, which concealed the lab behind its structure. If the lab was the heart of the Colchian experimentation, I was worried about the state we'd find Slinek in. I'd heard the words from the chief's lips before Tyler threw a haymaker at him. There had been an idle comment about so-called neurological focuses, and it was safe to assumption that re-education was tantamount to a writing neurochemistry. It was quite possible that our Vendel friend wouldn't be happy to see us, which meant that he could not accompany us willingly. I could only imagine how devastated Marcel would be if his exchange partner aboard his existence. Now Vendel might not be the only person back there. Moronis had claimed that the Shadow Cast dabbled in human experimentation after Malou. This matched with Koji's mention of multiple screams hailing from the lab. The inhumane procedures could be stretched to several test subjects for different purposes. It was a good thing that the UN soldiers wore biohazard gear to offer because the cure was the only type of interrogation efforts the Colchians had for omnivores. There was no telling how terrible the condition would be in the lab, but I was preparing myself for the worst. It would be a positive outcome if our friend's persona was still there at all. End of chapter. I would just quickly like to thank the T5 peeps. Dragon Soup, Cold War Boomer Waffen, Severin Cerberus, Red Panda 121, Leslie 517, Bushmaster 177, Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Sans the Skeleton, Lightshock, Dragzoon WRE, and Lord Azrakal. Thank you very much.